Welcome to My Messy Notes. Enjoy and learn, and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting future content and projects. Today we're going to be discussing Mallory Weiss syndrome and Borhoff syndrome. Now in real life, it's very easy to tell the difference between the two, but because of their similarities, they make a great test question because you only need one or two differences in the question stem and you should be oriented to the right answer. So let's start off with the pathology of each. For Mallory Weiss, it's going to be a longitudinal mucosal laceration. And for Borhav, it's going to be a full thickness tear of the esophagus. Okay, Both these syndromes are of the esophagus. So another term for full thickness tear you might see is a transmural tear. And they might also say a perforation of the esophagus. So there are three terms that you might see. Full thickness, transmural, and perforation of the esophagus. For Mallory Weiss, it's their mucosal lacerations, so they're superficial, which is another word you might see. There'll be a superficial tear, which will lead to bleeding from the submucosal arteries. So Mallory Weiss usually secondary to an increase in intra-abdominal pressure. With Borhav, the perforation is a result of an increase in intraesophageal pressure. With negative intrathoracic pressure. So you can imagine there's an increase in intraesophageal pressure with negative intrathoracic pressure which then causes the rupture of the esophagus. It's a full thickness tear of the esophagus. This increased intraesophageal pressure is due to the contraction of the cricopharyngeus muscle and the closing of the pyloric sphincter that happens when a person vomits or retches. So the way you should think about it is think of Borhoff syndrome as bore. So a wild boar goes crazy, goes right through the esophagus, causes a full thickness tear, causing all the gastric contents, the saliva, the bile, acid, to enter the mediastinum. Uh, this, so the boar goes right through the esophagus, full transmural tear, full thickness tear, while Mallory Weiss is the opposite. It's just a mucosal laceration that causes bleeding from the submucosal arteries. So next we'll talk about the location of each tear. For Mallory Weiss, the location will be in the distal esophagus and proximal stomach. So it'll be just below the gastroesophageal junction. However, on exams, it never says just below. It just says gastroesophageal junction. So if you see gastroesophageal junction, that will be your answer. Okay, Gastroesophageal junction will point you to the direction of Mallory Weiss immediately. For Borhoff syndrome, the location will be the distal esophagus, but the poster, left posterolateral portion of the distal esophagus. So left, distal, posterolateral, esophagus. And the reason this happens in the left distal posterolateral esophagus is because this is where there's anatomic weakness in the intrinsic muscles of the esophagus. And this is relatively important because the clinical appearance of a patient with Borhoff syndrome depends on where the transmural perforation or tear is. Keep in mind, this is just for Mallory Weiss and Borhoff syndrome, this is just where it's more likely to occur. For Mallory Weiss, it's more likely to occur in the gastroesophageal junction. And for Borhoff syndrome, it's more likely to occur in the left distal posterior lateral esophagus. However, it can happen anywhere along the esophagus. So now let's talk about patient history. They're going to be exactly the same. For Mallory Weiss, the patient will have a history of vomiting, 
and retching. For Borhoff syndrome, the patient will also have a history of vomiting and retching. Borhoff syndrome is an esophageal perforation that's caused by vomiting and retching, not any other cause. However, Mallory West can be caused by anything that can cause a laceration, a superficial laceration in the esophagus. So it can be something like an NG tube or an endoscopy or an, a blunt abdominal injury. It could be the, in anything that causes an increase in intra-abdominal pressure, like we, you'll see vomiting on exam, but it could be uh, coughing or lifting. So basically anything that causes a superficial tear is Mallory White syndrome. However, Borhoff syndrome is specific to vomiting and retching, uh, which results in the a full thickness tear of the esophagus. So you can't have an injury to the esophagus that's caused by some other means uh, and call it Borhoff syndrome. It won't be Borhoff syndrome. It's just an esophageal perforation. So something that I see in questions that might not necessarily be true anymore is that Mallory Weiss syndrome patients have a hiatal hernia. Now it used to be thought that every patient had a Mallory Weiss tear also had a hiatal hernia, but this is no longer the case, but it still might show up on exam. So if you see hiatal hernia, definitely think of Mallory Weiss, and I've seen that on a few questions, so keep that in mind. I should point out that some people like to say Borhoff syndrome is more for the chronic alcoholic, or and Mallory Weiss is more of the acute binge drinking individual. However, that really doesn't help. They could both be as a result of acute binge drinking. So just know vomiting and retching, for whatever reason they're vomiting or retching, whether they're alcoholics or bulimics, vomiting and retching, doesn't matter if it's acute or chronic, that's what you'll see in patient history and that's what's important. So now let's talk about the clinical symptoms. For Mallory Weiss, it's going to be a sudden onset of hematemesis. And that's the main thing about Mallory Weiss, it'll be hematemesis. And depending on the amount of bleeding, if there are copious amounts of blood loss, the patient might have signs of hypovolemia, like delayed capillary refill. The patient may be pale, cool, have clammy skin, be tachycardic, hypotensive. However, what you need to know is that there will be no dysphagia. And I obviously emphasize a negative here because Borhoff will have, may have dysphagia. But if you see dysphagia, it's not Mallory Weiss. While there's no dysphagia in Mallory Weiss, you might have a dinophagia. So you will not have difficulty swallowing, but you may have pain on swallowing foods and fluids. So no dysphagia, you might have a dinophagia. For Borhoff syndrome, no Macler's triad. No K-N-O-W, not no. <laughs> Macler's triad, you don't have to memorize the word Macler's, but no what's involved in Macler's triad. They're going to give you a patient that's vomiting, patient with chest pain, and this chest pain will be acute retrosternal chest pain, and a patient with subcutaneous emphysema. So this subcutaneous emphysema will result in crepitus on palpation. If you see crepitus, on palpation of the chest wall, it's going to be Borhoff syndrome because that's just an indication for subcutaneous emphysema. Now, as I said before, you don't need to memorize the word Mackler. You just need to know what's involved with Mackler's triad, which is vomiting, chest pain, subcutaneous emphysema. However, you need to know Hammond's sign. H-A-M-M-A-N-S, Hammond's sign, or it's also it also may be called Hammond's crunch. Now, a way to memorize this, we said earlier that Borhov is boar, like a wild boar, causes a full thickness here, ham, also pork. So what's Hammond's sign? So it's going to be a systolic crunching sound. So basically the heart will be on systole, and the pericardium of the heart comes in contact with the mediastinal air. So pericardium touches 
mediastinal air. Now I'm emphasizing this because people generally confuse Hammond sign with subcutaneous emphysema. This is not the crepitus. This is a crunching sound that's caused by the heart actually coming in contact with mediastinal air. So you're going to hear this on auscultation during systole. With Borhoff syndrome, you might also have mediastinitis. And this carries a high mortality. Obviously, mediastinitis is not possible with Mallory Weiss. Another thing to keep in mind is that Borhoff syndrome, remember we said the transmural tear or this perforation happens in the left distal posterior lateral esophagus. So in a patient that has Borhoff syndrome, they're going to get a pleural or they may get a pleural effusion, but it'll be on the left side, okay? Left because it happened in the left because of the perforation or the full thickness there happens in the left distal posterior lateral esophagus. However, if it happens on the mid esophagus, you might get a pleural fusion or a hydropneumothorax on the right side. And as we said before, there's no dysphagia for Mallory Weiss, but there is dysphagia for Borhoff syndrome, or there may be dysphagia if there's a cervical perforation, right? So depending on where in the esophagus is the Borhoff syndrome, is where you're going to see symptoms. So if you have a cervical perforation uh, of the esophagus, you're going to get neck pain, dysphagia. So instead of the crepitus being on the chest wall, you might have cervical subcutaneous emphysema. If it's an intra-abdominal perforation, uh, you might also see that you might have radiation to the shoulder uh, or back pain. So also radiation to shoulder. I'll write it down because this actually sometimes comes up. So with Mallory Weiss and Borhoff syndrome, you're going to have nonspecific signs like tachycardia, diaphoresis, hypotension. However, with Borhoff syndrome, you're going to have, a fe you may have fever due to sepsis. If there's fever, it's definitely not Mallory Weiss, it'll be Borhoff syndrome. In contrast to Mallory Weiss, hematemesis, if it's present in Borhoff syndrome, is not a significant feature. So while hematemesis here, I have put a star next to it, it's significant for Mallory Weiss, it may, it's not significant for Borhoff syndrome if it's present at all. So how do we diagnose Mallory Weiss and how do we diagnose Borhoff syndrome? Mallory Weiss syndrome is diagnosed via upper endoscopy or EGD. Some review books have it as you do an esophagram because you don't know if it's Mallory Weiss or Borhoff syndrome. When the exam asks you what's the next step to diagnose this patient, they're going to do it on the pretense that you know that it's Mallory Weiss, that you were able to differentiate Mallory Weiss from Borhoff syndrome. So the answer would be upper endoscopy. If you use diagnosis of Borhoff syndrome, which will be an esophagram with gastrographin, then it's, you're basically answering a question for Borhoff syndrome instead of Mallory Weiss syndrome. In fact, you should know that for Borhoff syndrome, the actual best test for Borhoff syndrome is an endoscopy, right? So even if they ask you what's the best test, the answer for both Mallory Weiss and Borhoff would be endoscopy. However, they'll never ask you what's the best test for Borhoff syndrome, okay? Because you don't do an endoscopy because it's transmural tear. So you can possibly extend the perforation and even introduce air into the mediastinum. So they won't ask you if, if they want you to, the whole point is to differentiate between the two. They won't ask you what's the best test because you don't do the best test for Borhoff syndrome. You do the safest test and that will be the esophagram with gastrographin and gastrographin instead of varium because gastrographin is not toxic to the mediastinum. It uh, doesn't cause an inflammatory response like varium. So Mallory Weiss, always choose upper endoscopy. That will be your right answer, okay? Borhoff syndrome, even though, you know, the best test is actually physically looking in the esophagus, right? I mean, that's the best absolute test. You know what's going on. However, you don't want to do that in Borhoff syndrome. Like I said, you don't want to extend the perforation or introduce air into the mediastinum. You do an esophagram with gastrograph in the water-soluble contrast. Now, if you don't see anything for Borhoff syndrome with an esophagram with gastrograph in, then you do it with barium because barium is better than gastrographin. It's better at visualizing the uh, small perforations. If you still don't see anything, okay, so this is if you don't see anything. If you still don't see anything, 
then that's when you're going to use an upper endoscopy, okay? So only if you still don't see anything with the barium, that's when you do an upper endoscopy. Okay, so let's go over the diagnosis again for Mallory Weiss. The best and the first and the only diagnosis you need is an upper endoscopy. If you suspect Mallory Weiss, the answer is upper endoscopy. For Borhoff syndrome, the diagnosis will be an esophagram with gastrographin. That's the first test you use. Okay. Keep in mind, for Borhoff syndrome, the best test is still an endoscopy, but you can't do that. You have a tear in the esophagus, you have a full thickness tear, you can't introduce a scope in there. So you do an esophagram with gastrographin. Then if you don't visualize anything, you do it with barium, right? A gastrographin with barium. Then if you don't demonstrate any signs of perforation there, then you do an upper endoscopy. So what about treatment? So for Mallory Weiss, it's usually a self-limited condition, so it heals spontaneously. However, you don't know why they have hematemesis, so you treat it like any other GI bleed. So you give them two large bore IVs, IV fluids, you type and cross, you transfuse as needed, you give them PPIs, and you call for a GI consult. On exams, what you need to do is you need to give them IV PPIs first, and then you do an upper endoscopy. And with the upper endoscopy, you have numerous therapeutic modalities. You can do an endoscopic band ligation, provide hemoclips or uh, electrocautery. However, know that the wrong answer will be epinephrine. Okay, so no epinephrine. In the answer choices, they'll always have just an endoscopic modality, right? Epinephrine by itself as a monotherapy is inefficient because there's a high risk of recurrent bleeding. For Borhoff syndrome, the treatment will be surgery. You make them MPO, you give them IV antibiotics, TPN, PPI. However, the answer on exams will be surgery. Okay. In real life, you don't always have to give surgery for Borhoff syndrome. It depends on if the perforation is contained or free. However, for your exam, Borhoff syndrome, it's always surgery for treatment. For Mallory Weiss, the treatment is IV, PPI, endoscopy, which has multiple therapeutic modalities. And if you don't see anything on endoscopy because the bleeding might have stopped, uh, you just discharge them on PO, PPI. All right, thank you for watching.